Hi everyone, it's Linda Lee, and I am going to be working on a swap project um, that I have for, um, well, it's a bag and tag uh, swap uh, within the Junk Journal Junkies ETC group. I just got done, um, these are dry now, I did my little finger painting uh, technique on my bags. Um, if you all aren't that familiar with it, let me kind of show you what it is. Um, let me grab, I don't want to wet these again because I want to work on them right away. Let me get a piece of paper. Okay, so this is an oversized envelope. Um, I won't be using this for the project I'm working on, but I'll, I'll show you real quick um, what I mean by finger painting. Um, and I'll link uh, that video that I did on the whole thing uh, in the description. But really what it is, is I just have a little spray bottle here. I got this from like the dollar store and it has coffee inside. Um, it is instant coffee. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll just use yesterday's coffee and by finger painting, what I mean is I spray it and I smoosh and then what happens is when it dries, it looks like it typically would when you bake it in the oven. So and then I go turn it over, spray a few times, smoosh it around, and that's my finger painting technique. And then if I want to go back after it's dry and spray it again so that there is more um, marks on it, then I'll do that. But now I just set this aside and let it air dry. Um, I don't typically bake these. It's not fully saturated and it doesn't take a lot of time to dry. So that is my finger painting technique. <laughs> um, but now the, this will dry in just a few moments. Um, what I was doing is these are the larger sandwich bags. Um, that come in Kelly's shop. So what I did is this is like one long bag. So this is the bottom half, this is the top half, and I cut it. So it's a submarine sandwich bag. Um, but I cut it in half, and this I just folded so far. And this I used my circle punch, but um, it didn't really cut this paper, at least after it was treated. Um, very well, but I kind of like the rugged look of it if you can see it. The other one got tore just a little bit more, but I, I like it actually. Um, so it's part of my overall design plan. <laughs> um, but the project is making um, two tags and two bags, and I have two partners. So I did um, two different envelopes, top and a bottom for one, and a top and a bottom for the other. And now I just need to do some decorating and then make a tag that typically would match. Um, it doesn't have to match, I don't think, but I'm gonna make mine coordinate and that'll you know, fit inside. So it'll be a, a larger tag. Um, now the journal that I just finished making, I still have a lot of those bits in my project box. So I, that's what I'm actually gonna use. I'm just gonna kind of, use some of those scraps so I don't have so many to put away. These here I wanted to show you. Um, I didn't use any of these in my last journal, the floral motivational one, but what these are are, you know, the trim scraps. Well, what I'm trying to say is the pieces of paper that we cut. And then typically, you know, it looks like they're not big enough for anything. What I've been doing is actually just sewing the strips. So um, instead of actually sewing on a project, you can typically glue these on. So it, it kind of looks like you maybe sew, or you did some sewing. Um, I played with some stitches on some of them, and um, this one I was just playing. I had a piece of a uh, little card glued to a fabric that I didn't use, so I just sewed that. But yeah, I just did some random sewing and then I did, you know, the little crimple technique that we kind of use with our seam binding and ribbons. Uh, I did that with some paper. I have a couple of them. And 
and did some sewing on those so I can actually just glue those down and you know they're kind of ready for any project that I might want to use them on yep so uh, I used some of these I haven't really fully decided but I did pull them out because they were kind of sitting on the top of some other stuff and close at hand um, and then this is just the stuff some of the leftover stuff from that um, journal I didn't use any of these uh, little uh, satin bows but I am going to use these on this project here and then still some lace and stuff so uh, some of the French doilies from Kelly's shop I have some of the appliques also from her shop and then pieces of seam binding excuse me and then random pieces of lace and all of those um, off cuts from the collaging that I did oh there's another little I actually have those um, here too so these are probably what I'm going to use I'll use that little collage technique for the tags and then for the bag um, I'm not sure really what I'm going to do. I still have that stencil nearby, so I'm going to do a little bit of stenciling and then kind of work it out and just take you guys along with me. So maybe I'll do something a little different than what you've done and um, who knows where it'll take us, right? So let me go ahead and grab some of my bags. And I do know that I'm going to do a little bit of the stenciling and see my envelope is almost dry already and see it left the little marks and we'll check in on that in a few minutes so you can kind of see it fully dry. Isn't that cool though? So I'm just going to take some of the bags. I'm going to start with some stenciling because we're going to do the background and then the foreground. Actually, let's do some script stamping first. So I'm going to use my Ranger Cocoa Colored ink. Um, this is just an all-purpose ink. And turn this right side up. And I'm just gonna do some random script stamping on the bags before I do a little bit of stenciling almost through it Oop, to the back side and one more Okay, so we got all the script stamping done, and I can put this ink and stamp away. Now, I do want to do a little bit of stenciling. Um, I'm going to use my Distressed Oxide for this because the pink ink that I have is... Um, it's on the dry side, and I just randomly select a little different pieces of the stencil. And you don't have to take a whole lot of time with something like this. I just want to subtly bring in the stencil pattern. And a lot of it's going to get covered by something but that's okay, we work in layers, you know what I mean? Okay, so don't worry, I'll probably, you know, do some of this and then uh, jump forward and do a little time-lapse recording so I don't lose you all 
because this isn't really exciting to watch. <laughs> of course, maybe it is, right? I know when I um, look at different uh, videos, I'm looking for longer ones so that, you know, I have something to watch and listen to while I'm crafting. But from my doing the recordings, I haven't noticed that anybody really hangs out and watches um, that much with me. At least not yet. I don't have that big of a following. So maybe later as I build my community, um, that'll be something that I do a little bit differently. But for right now, I'm going to try and keep my videos on the shorter side. So... So, so far we've done some um, coffee treatment, my little finger treatments, um, finger painting. We've done some script stamping. We're doing a little bit of stenciling. And then we're going to start doing some gluing and, you know, select kind of how we're going to decorate. Um, I do know the tags are going to be kind of collaged, so maybe we'll just do like a collaged pocket or something for the bag. I don't know. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Pick the front. So this oxide is water reactive. If I were to spray this again with my coffee, um, this pink would smear all over the place. Um, it's not an archival ink. It doesn't stay permanent. Um, but if you let it sit for a while on the paper surface, it will completely dry. So as long as it doesn't get wet again, which isn't typical to happen to, you know, once it's gifted, um, it's not gonna change, you know, what I'm stenciling. Does that make sense? <laughs> Hopefully I'm still in frame. I haven't paid attention at all to whether I'm in frame. <laughs> so, just a little bit more over here, I think. And my intention is uh, actually to um, sew all the way around these bags. Um, my sewing machine I keep under my desk, so when I do break to do the sewing, um, we'll come back and I'll just attach the, the video, two videos together instead of, you know, kind of taking you along that. Because I don't think you can even see it with my sewing machine right here, I'm not sure. But... Okay, so we got some foundation stuff done, and I haven't glued this yet. Maybe I'll do that before I start building. Um, so this is the top half of the envelope, and ooh, it's all goopy. I need to um, glue the two top parts of the bag so that it formally has a bottom. So I'm just going to put a little line of glue. I'm using uh, the Aileen's Tacky Glue for this. You could probably use a glue stick. Um, now this is multiple ply, so I'm just gluing down the most inside one, and then I am, remember, I'm going to go over this with a sewing machine. I just want to give um, that bottom piece, get it to stick so that when I put it through the machine, it'll stay flatter easier. So, and the glue will be dry by the time we do that. You got to be careful using your glue and your sewing machine because you don't want to goop up your, your needle. I haven't done that yet, but it can happen. 
Okay, I'm back. Sorry for the interruption. Um, my guy just got off of work, so he always calls me on his way home. Um, now for the front, I think, at least for the two pieces that are the top half of the bag, I'm probably not gonna, I'll probably do them fairly similar. And I don't have any more of the fussy cutting left over, but I do have some butterfly stickers. These are like little washi stickers. They came from Kelly's shop as well. Um, what I'll probably do is, where is a glue stick? A little glue stick. Brand new one too. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of glue the edges down a little bit. butterflies so the tags um, I have leftover pieces from that journal I will use the bigger pieces so it's going to be pink so I want some butterflies that will work with the pink I think all of these will work with the pink Maybe what I'll do is, this is for the other one, so we'll do purple for the one set and pinks for this set, and we'll go with these two, so they're, alright, so that was quick and easy, let me put these away real quick. Okay. So what I think I'll do is, how big is this? Make a square so that I can make a fold down pocket that can actually be journaled on. So we'll keep the envelope fairly free from being too bulky. So now this is going to be the purple, more purple one. And let's just trim off a little bit more so it's more square. Exactly a square. Actually, I want to fold it this way so that the more ornamental side is on the outside. If I could only do it straight. <laughs> So it's just off the edge on both sides so that we can potentially see the stitching. So what happens is this becomes a pocket. 
and then this is potentially space that can be journaled on and then but what I am gonna do is explain myself <laughs> we're just gonna put a, a posty note in here and say hinge for gluing I don't want to write on the doily just in case it shows through Does that make sense? So that this here will get glued to a piece of paper, you know, a page in a journal, and this can be opened up like this. So this way, this is for writing, and then this is just ornamental. And then this is gonna get glued and sewn. Let's go ahead and use my glue stick. I'm just going to tack this down so it kind of stays in place until I sew it. sticker for this one so I'm going to keep this free from too much bulk and so um, I don't this isn't finished but I'm gonna set this one aside and let's do the same similar to this one pink on this one so yeah I don't get too fancy with my measuring I just kind of put it up to where it needs to be and then crimp it so that I can trim it down. If you don't have one of these little trimmers, you can definitely use um, scissors. I just have it, so I use it quite frequently. Oops, I see I did this one backwards too. darker bolder guy all right so these are kind of started probably going to do a little more embellishing but you get the gist of what I'm doing here and then I'm going to sew it around. Let's go ahead and do a couple of these. And I have a lot of stuff 
that's got some distressing already. Okay, I think it gives us a pretty good amount to work with here. Um, I'm going to be distressing with walnut stain. Let's trim this edge a little bit. So again, remember these little edges that I'm trimming off, I won't throw them away. Well, at some point I will, because I'll end up with too many, but this is what I do, you know, the stitching on. So this one I had two different colors. I had um, like beige on one side and brown on the other. So it gives me kind of options and also this particular paper was two-sided, so that's why I've got, you know, something different on the other side. This I'll probably trim down so I can use some on both tags. So then once I'm done with the two tags that I have here, um, I'll have two more tags to do because it's two bags, two tags for each individual and I have two people that I'm swapping with. But it's been a little while since I actually did um, a creating swap since I started doing YouTube, you know, I've been doing the journals in my content for the videos, so now I get to play with you guys for a while because I'm done with that stuff, at least for the time being. I have some other projects to do. I have some jewelry I want to make. I have some stuff that I'd really like to get posted in my Etsy shop. I haven't been active with that at all yet. That's got to change. I can't sell stuff if it's not for sale, right? <laughs> can't sell it if you don't talk about it. I am looking forward though to sharing that stuff. I have some crochet bracelets memory wire. When I started my uh, In the Sun Creations, uh, my small business, I originally intended for it to be bracelets. It's just, I wanted, I love bracelets. I don't really wear a lot of necklaces. Um, and I wanted it to be, you know, a little necklace or a bracelet company. And I just would have all kinds of different types of bracelets. But it's hard, you know, to stay just bracelets when, you know, there's so many different pieces of jewelry that are inspired by, you know, just a bracelet or a bead. <coughs> so I started making matching earrings and coordinating necklaces, um, key rings, all kinds of different stuff, bookmarks. I got cuff bracelets now. So I just need to get some of that stuff made and listed. Some of it I already have made. I just haven't listed them because the whole Etsy thing is pretty involved. Even for just each individual listing, I'm just looking to find my groove with that, I think, is the thing. So I'm almost done with the inking girls. You don't have to suffer through that. So this is why I'm only doing a couple because I don't want to bore you with this particular detail. I forget this isn't the Elmer's glue so you can't just pull it up like that. You can try to. So 
So what I'm doing is I'm going over the edges just a little bit so that I can trim it down. And Just a wee bit for the corner up here. So we'll give that a moment and we'll trim it down. do the same thing to this one. So now what I'll do is I'll just distress around the edges and um, then she'll be ready for sewing. And then what I'll probably do is not sew on camera. We'll come back after I do all the stitching. Alrighty, so we've got everything sewn. Um, the uh, two bags that are more pink and then the two bags that are purple. Uh, I stitched all the way around. This one I um, remembered to open it so that I didn't stitch it open, but then I forgot and stitched it closed. So I had to cut it so that it'll fold back down. Just a little extra added detail. And on the second half of the bag, um, what I did is I added a pocket. So this is a regular um, designer piece of paper. And what I did is I folded the top edge and I glued it so it's a little more sturdy, kind of like this is now because it's a, a doubled instead of it just being a single piece of paper. And I did the same for the purple. Um, this one I did remember to open and then close so I didn't stitch that one on the other side. And I did remember to stitch it with this open too. So this ends up being, you know, the hinge that I want it to be. And then um, I sewed around the large tickets that we made too. I did lightly stencil with, um, which one did I use? This one here. I used the gathered twigs and just used the same stencil and lightly stenciled some um, bits on the back. So at least it had some kind of decoration. In all four. I left all my strings on so far. You know me, I like my strings um, or threads, but at the same time, uh, they're pretty extreme at the moment, so I'll probably trim them down. But now I want to, you know, put some toppers on the tags and maybe some crimple ribbon on the bottom of the envelopes. Um, I haven't decided if I want to use some lace or not, but definitely seam binding. I kind of pulled the possible colors out of the bag so I could kind of see them while I'm sitting here. Um, and I got the brown and then the two pinks. Can you see them? i pull them in a little bit. And then I do have some of the little bows and a few of the appliques. I'm kind of on the, on the, uh, edge I guess about deciding on these because I wanted to keep them so that they were really nice and flat you know not only for shipping but for in use too because you know this you start putting stuff here then you can't really write you know on this part of it you're only writing here um, so but I think I want to put some kind of decoration on it so we'll see um, first 
Uh, oh, and I did cut some little tags um, and pieces of uh, pink cardstock for the front pockets that we did just make. So at least something will be in there. Um, again, I'm, I want to keep it as flat as possible, so I'm probably not going to bulk things up too much, uh, just with maybe just the seam bindings. I don't know. So let's go ahead and move this stuff aside for the moment. Um, I do want to put some little crimple on the bottom. This is what I used on the other. And with it being on the thread, it's going to be a little chunky, but that's okay. Gives it a little more to grab onto. paper is. I like having wax paper when I do stuff like this because the wax paper doesn't stick but I can make sure that everything else is squished flat. Can you see me? go get some wax paper. I'll be right back. Let's do the same thing for this one. Only we're gonna use we're gonna use the purple or the beigey one. Okay, this one sits a little lower because I didn't sew it.
one's a little different. go ahead and put some tags This is called um, Eslan, and it's a nylon braided cord. I use this when I embroider my necklaces, but it's nice because it's a little heavier than regular thread, and it just shows up a little better. This is a little vintage button from my collection. So it is going to be a little bulkier because I'm sticking this stuff on, 
more so than I originally had planned. But it's pretty. And tip here. a couple minutes So when I get everything finished, I'll come back and we'll take pictures of it all so you can see.